Welcome, everyone, to the Campus Waterfowl Podcast. I'm your host, Derek Christians. This weekend, we're out here with NC State and uh, East Carolina University. We're out here doing a group, a big group uh, swan hunt. So uh, got some exciting content today. It's actually the end of kind of our our trip now. And we're going to be talking about this weekend in this podcast. Also, all things, I think, swan hunting. I think our listeners are kind of curious of what it's like swan hunting, how big they are actually, uh, maybe what what you do with them afterwards, um, and then also maybe if they're interested in maybe coming to North Carolina to come uh, and try to bag a, a big swan, um, how, what's the kind of process to do that. So, And then also I'd like to talk about your guys' backgrounds and your involvement with DU because that's kind of how why, why we're here today, um, how we kind of all met and kind of got this big group of, I think we had, how many people did we have this weekend? Eight tags, eight eight total tags, eight tags and nine people. And then nine people out here, so it's been a, it's been a busy weekend out here, um, in Hyde County. But it's been a lot of fun, uh, meeting everyone and and seeing everyone again. So, uh, but we're gonna get that talk about that in our podcast this episode. Uh, before we do that, though, we got some sponsors to thank for our tour. We, uh, this year, we got Ken Cartridge sponsoring our tour with their Fast Deal Plus loads. It's a stack load this year, um, so be on the lookout for that. Even though it's Toward the end of the, the hunting season, maybe there's some sales year-end sales <laughs> coming around the corner, possibly, that you can save for uh, some ammo for next season. But uh, also, we got Benelli USA uh, this year. And even this hunt, we were shooting the Benelli M2s. Did you guys get a chance to shoot those? Or did, did not. You didn't? Shoot. I think we had them all. <laughs> oh, NC State <laughs> took them. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, they, they've been uh, gracious enough to sponsor our tour, so... Um, big shout out to Kent Cartridge and Benelli. Let's get into our podcast and meet some of our guests. Uh, Tanner, you want to start us off with a little background or introduce yourself in a little background quick? So I'm Tanner. I'm from East Carolina University. I'm currently a grad student there. I ran the chapter for a couple of years there and now I'm serving as their district chairman. So I'm over the whole Southeast region or district three chair. So I cover, I just help them with all their events and make sure they're on the right track when stuff comes up. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm also from East Carolina University. I came into East Carolina last year, found out we had DU chapter, joined up, worked all my event, all, worked all worked all the events, went to every meeting. By the banquet rolling around, got told, voluntold, I was actually going to be chairman for next year. So Tanner helped me get ready for next year and get everything set up. I'm Mason. I'm from NC State University, and I'm the, the current chairman there. Um, this will be my second year, and then um, I'm from Wake Forest and been in DU ever ever since I can remember. Have, did you guys meet one another all through DU chapter, through your G, DU chapters? Me and Tanner grew up in the same town. Oh, you did? Really? Yep. Nice. And then did you guys, were you guys involved with DU at all in, like, high school or just growing up in the same town? I Maybe go to a couple of Green Wing events, but yeah, not I was, huge. I was going to say, maybe an event here and there, just Green Wing, but nothing big. I mean, our high, the high school I went to didn't have anything. Nothing really local was big. Yeah. I mean, I would. Uh, my dad does the security for our event for probably 15 years. So I've, that's why I've always gone to ours, so I've always been around it. Um, to kick off the podcast, I really want to dive into the swan hunting out here. Um, I don't know if the listeners know how big that of a – thing that is in North Carolina how would you guys describe just like just swan hunting out here for people he maybe he wanted to hear about it for the first time I mean I would honestly say like an out-of-body experience like I mean this is probably my second or third time coming to High County and she's always during duck season uh just coming into High County as soon as you cross the line you mean you see swans sitting out in the fields you see them early in the morning this comes in waves like looking like black cow looking like black clouds just rolling in the treetops and everything yeah, and I mean, they're massive birds. I mean, their wingspans can go anywhere from probably as big as six foot, six and a half feet wide. I mean, it's incredible how big these birds are. And they're fun to hunt, and they're they're getting smarter and smarter as they get old, as they, they keep coming. I'd say it's definitely a different experience. I mean, this is this year's my first year on a swan hunt, and I enjoyed it. I'd definitely do it again for sure. We've, we've uh, so this is our second se- second year in a row actually coming to. North Carolina, and then actually more specifically even Hyde County. Um, Hyde County is now being here two years. It's a very special place, um, I've realized. Last year I didn't really know what made it special, but now 
being here again. It's very unique. Um, how would you guys describe like Hyde County compared to like the rest of the state of North Carolina? I mean, it's totally different. I mean, the people here are different. The duck hunting here is different. I mean, you you get you cross the county line and you know you're in Hyde County. I mean, you see that black dirt and birds in the sky, you know you're here. The wild, I mean, the wildlife altogether is just different. The atmosphere, all of it's just different. Nothing better than it, really. Yeah. I mean, like you said, the people are different. People here, I mean, you can come out of state. They'll treat you like family, you know, look out for you, tell you, uh, tell you cool stories about their hunts and everything, and just give you some tips and tricks also. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, being here, it's been really fun to see, like, very the community atmosphere where, like, even we sat there for lunch today, we ate at Martell's, and, yep. and sitting there, like, there's not too many places in the country anymore where you walk in and, it's just all like hunters and just everyone just came off a hunt and it's it's not just like a, a tiny place it's it's a pretty big place where there's a few quite a few people there and that just got off a hunt and it was, it was fun to see just the camaraderie of everyone kind of having uh conversations and uh, amongst over tables and stuff and it felt like a little even family reunion out of <laughs> there so it, that was fun to see and just kind of be a part be a part of that um so, yeah, out here Hyde County, um, the swan hunting, uh, we were lucky enough to get connected with, is it Tri, Tri-County Guide Service? So, um, you guys want to talk about this morning a little bit and, and how that went? Yeah, so, I mean, it was a great morning with Tri-County. A bunch of, We saw a bunch of birds. I know a lot of the boys have never seen that many swans before. Nothing like it. ECU went in the second group and... We went. They we went and took care of what we needed to take care of. I mean, birds were there to God provide it for us. I mean, not a whole lot better. Yeah, I mean, we went in the first group and um, we had some gun malfunctions and stuff. But uh, <laughs> we uh, we can we got our four and came out, but and then let them come in and you know left the ones we left behind. <laughs> so. I will say they they were timing you guys when they yeah. came out into the <laughs> out into the uh, in the ditch. They they. Time, clocked it out. What? How long were they out there? They were out there for a good two hours. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that might be a little stretch. And how long were you guys stretch. out there? We were probably out there about thirty minutes, That's forty-five <laughs> minutes. I mean, we were warming them up for them. warming <laughs> them up. <Ooh. laughs> say Adam did a great job providing us a great place to hunt with Tri County. I mean, yeah, the birds were there. He did a great job, like just getting the birds in our face to do what we needed to do to fill our tag. I mean, we were where, we were where they wanted to be. So, I mean, it makes it pretty pretty easy. For the most part, when you get to do it, see them like that. And honestly, you kind of get mesmerized. You know, you see them big birds just start working, you know, coming in, like floating in. You kind of just like want to sit back and watch. And you can right. remember, I got one tag to fill. I got to shoot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is It is kind of fun in that way where, yeah, each person has their, their tag. And it's kind of like a gentleman shoot where you just go down the line of, okay, it's your turn. And once you get your fill your tag, then it's the next person's turn. And so kind of when it's your turn, it's pressure on. So, yeah. so that was fun to watch you guys. Um step up to the plate i guess oh yeah especially with the people that got their first their first one so that was a lot of fun we had two people in our group get their first swan so that was fun we did as well mm-hmm. yeah a couple first and then even um kylie she said she was gonna bring hers to the taxidermist so yep. that's yeah be. she shot a, shot a stud i think it was 76 inches wide wingspan yeah. and yours is yeah. 77 so. yeah yeah EC- ecu won the wingspan off the two so, all right, now we're two for two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know who was measured, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wasn't it William? I'm pretty yeah, sure it was. It was, was, one, of boys, <laughs> it was one of your boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, was, that was, yeah, first time being out there. It's a lot of fun uh, watching those birds. Um, what else? What about um, when it comes to just the process of getting a tag? What's what's that like? Um um, in the summertime, I think it's from July to September 1st, I believe you have to go online and basically you just pay, I think it's like 10 bucks if you're in state. And I believe they gave out 5,000 tags this year and 4,500 of them were for in state. And you might not quote me on those numbers, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty close. Um, and basically you just apply on there and it's, it's kind of a lottery system. So if you've shot one before, if it's, if you filled out your survey and you got better chances and if you... You know, you kind of can build your points up to get it more often. But, I mean, you kind of pull your tag and you shoot your bird. and um, you, I mean, this is one of the best places to come to do it. I would honestly say it's probably best to go in as, as a big party with bigger friends, right, family members. It's a lot easier to get tags that way. I know that's how uh, two of our guys were able to get tags this year because we just went as 
a group of four, and we got able to get our tags. Got some of us already went uh, swan hunting before in past years. How would you say, um, just even like hunting them is compared to, like your maybe goose, your typical goose hunt or or duck hunt that you might go on? Like, how would you describe how you're setting up the decoys and things like that, or even just watching the guide this morning? Um, how is it different? I mean, the principles are basically the same. You know, you want the bird to get as close as possible and hopefully be cupped up landing into the decoys. That's always the goal. But, I mean, most of the time, if you're where they want to be, you don't really need to call. Um, there's not – some. there's a there's a swan call, I think, but not really many people use them. You can kind of just more or less scream at them a little bit, and they'll pretty much come back. They just need to hear noise. Can we get a, can we get an example for the podcast? I think Tanner can do it. <laughs> what they sound like? Uh, <laughs> uh, we might break the eardrums of the <laughs> listeners. <home. laughs> I think people have seen maybe for, listen to it on like yeah. inst- come across on Instagram or something. Yeah, we can insert a clip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Should have brought Bryson, but yeah, you can do it good. <laughs> um, and yeah, continue. Sorry. Um, but I mean, it's pretty. Some people say they're dumb birds, but I swear that's as, as Time goes on, they get smarter and smarter and smarter. Um, I mean, they're a fun bird to shoot. They're so big. I mean, the people think they're going a lot slower than they are, but they're they're moving pretty quick. I mean, when a six foot animal is flying by, they they got some got some pace behind them. Yeah. Like you say, most people think they're big dumb birds, but honestly, not. I mean, the juvies will come in a lot easier than the typical older swan population. But you know, if you really want like the full plumage, full color. You gotta sit there and wait your turn, wait for them to come in. Be patient with it, and you'll be able to get your shot out. Mm-hmm. A couple, a couple things that I'd follow up on is, uh, you brought out the, like mature versus the juvenile swans. Like, and these are like, granted, I should state it for the podcast, tundra swans, yeah. um, not trumpeters. <laughs> these are yeah. tundra swans. Um, like, how do you how do you distinguish between the juvenile and the mature ones? Um, the juveniles have gray kind of on their neck, and they'll have like more. Some of, if they're really young, have a like a pink bill. And then as they get older, they'll develop a black bill, and they'll become full white, and then they'll get a thicker neck. And when they're fully mature, they'll have what they call a yellow teardrop on their eye. Um, once they get that teardrop, that's pretty much about as big as they're going to get. I was about to say, it's, pr- it's a lot easier to tell between a juvenile and a mature full tundra swan. Like, if you see them in a group, you can kind of distinguish, like, uh, which one's probably been around longer than the smaller one that's in the group flying above you. I didn't know until this morning I heard Adam. I don't know if you guys caught it. Adam was saying, like, the juveniles will sound a little different, too. Like, it's more of, like, a, I don't know, like, a squeak or, or whatever. A um, lot more, sh- like, a lot shorter versus, like, some of the mature ones. So, that was interesting to hear. Um, and then, kind of, the other thing was, what you were talking about is, like, shoot, like shooting technique. Like, how far are you guys leading them, and where are you, where are you trying to hit them? I mean, it really depends. I mean... Most people, they come out here, they want to get a pretty bird, you know, probably want to mount it on the wall. So you want to aim for the head area, about to lead them about, depending how far up, usually about an inch, inch and a half in front of them. Um, if you're just wanting to get tundra swan for the meat, you know, just you really ain't got to lead them too much, but you do want to get a clean shot on them, make sure you, like, you do a humane way of killing. Yeah, I mean, if they're flying sideways, you're going to you're gonna lead them a little bit faster or a little bit farther, but I mean... If they're coming straight at you, you can pretty much just put it right on them, and it's going to take care of business. There was a good wind this morning, and some of those swans coming across, like coming with the wind, like they were booking it. Oh, yeah, they're moving. <laughs> um, and then what What else could we – anything else with the swan hunting you guys can think of, like that's just kind of unique or anything? Not really. I mean, it's a lot just like a, you're going to kill a big duck. Yeah. I mean, you don't <laughs> sit in a blind. You sit in, you sit in ditches. Right. So, yeah. I mean, that's a lot different. Most, like, I guess, waterfowl hunting, you know, you need to be in a, most waterfowl, you're hitting, sitting in a covered blind that you bl- that you brush in. Really, you just kind of just sit in a ditch and keep your head down, and you'll, it kind of does the job. And what kind of fields are they, are the, are, the, are these uh, swans landing in? I think we have, they're, they're in between corn. a bean and a cornfield. Okay. So, it kind of just depends which, who, which combine operator didn't do the best job and left the most on the ground. <laughs> just wherever the seeds are, yeah. they'll find it in. <laughs> You know, it was, that was something, and it's crazy how fast, kind of how fast it went too. That's that's another thing. It's like you're out there, and what time? What time we get back? Oh shoot, yeah, shoot for lunch. Yeah, yeah. By, by the time lunch came around, we had the eight. So now that was a fun hunt put on, put on by Tri County. So be on the lookout for those videos coming up here in the next 
week in, week or two. Um, we'll have a actual, we'll have the swan hunt, but then also an, a wood duck hunt that we did with Mason um, when we first got here. That's another thing that's North Carolina's kind of known for is their, their wood duck swamp hunting. Yeah, I mean, some states like Arkansas and Kansas, you know, they get those big flocks and a lot of mallards and stuff, but we're known for our swamp wood duck holes. I mean, <laughs> they're fast and furious, but they're fun. I mean, if you're in a good spot, I mean, it's a good time. Fast and f- fast and furious. That's what it was. <laughs> so. Like I think we shot for like twelve minutes or fourteen minutes. Yeah, that. that's my kind. Of, that's a good hunt though. Like about just there. going out there, get the shooting done. You just yeah. and then you're done for the day. Yeah, we were at Bojangles by like seven forty-five. Right. So it's yeah. pretty nice. And and wood ducks are good eating too. So you, you can't complain with that. Um, but yeah, so that'll be out as well. So be on the lookout for those on on YouTube. Um. Next thing, we got to talk about your guys' chapters. We got two very highly successful chapters here. Um, probably two of some of the most successful in, in the country. Um, we got, yeah, NC State and ECU. Um, you guys want to talk through of your guys' involvement with the having a um, Ducks Unlimited chapter at your college campus? Yeah, so I had the privilege of becoming a chairman for ECU this year. Um, kind of got volunteered last year, like I said earlier, by last year's chairman but you know you kind of take what you can get but now we do have our main banquet coming up uh most people don't know where ecu is at we're kind of looking i would say what north east north carolina no, northeast north carolina um in previous years we've actually built a chapter up from ground level i know when it's first founded in 2004 yep. uh we started off very small very local just community wise people didn't really know our name grew it up to become one of the top five collegiate chapters across the nation. Uh, we always compete with our our others, not going to mention. <laughs> but we always compete with them. You know, it's like good sibling ri- rivalry we have with them. But uh, we do have our main banquet coming up in February on the 16th. It's our big event we hold it each year. We kind of have about six, five to 600 attendees show up, uh, just come out, have a good time, have good food, meet good people, win a couple guns, a couple items, a couple nice uh, – and a couple of nice uh, ECU merch also. Yeah, yeah and we just had our uh, our fall banquet on the second Thursday in November every year. Um, we did pretty well. Um, we started in 2001, uh, and then, you know, we kind of kind of like they, they did. We started from the ground up. I mean, both of our chapters, you know, we didn't get handouts to get where we were at. We, we all worked hard and worked for what we got, um, and um, I think that's something that – you know, we're both proud about. We're both blue collar schools that, you know, I guess that's what we're founded on. Um, yeah, our bank we had about sixteen hundred people and um, you know, did did pretty well. So looking forward to another third term and hopefully another win on the <laughs> little sibling rivalry here. But I don't know. They did well, so we'll see. Um it's always fun to like compete with them, you know. We're all raising it for the same cause. At the end of the day, if they succeed, we all succeed. So um it's always fun, but it is fun to Kind of have that rivalry. Like Mason said, with all of us succeeding, I mean, we're from the same state. So, North Carolina, North Carolina Ducks and Lemony succeeds in the long run no matter which one wins between the siblings because it goes to the same cause in the long yeah. run. Mm-hmm. And yeah, of course, no. we couldn't have done this without, like, you know, local community support, you know, mm-hmm. reaching out to uh, companies, companies reaching out to us, friends, families, everybody showing up. Yeah. yeah. No, it's been fun to follow, like, the North Carolina uh, collegiate chapters over the years and just seeing that that friendly competitiveness between the two and then just North Carolina as a whole, they have the Ducks Unlimited um, benefit, benefiting from your guys' all, all the hard work that you guys do and the, and the events that you guys host. So, um, And then even hearing about it over the weekend, just kind of what it means for communities in, in your area. So uh, applaud you guys on all your hard work and wish you the best of – Luck with your uh, spring banquets coming up here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what about – so, Tanner, you recently graduated, correct? Or you're Yes, I graduated in May. Now I'm currently in grad school at ECU. At ECU still. And then – so you recently passed out of the torch to Chris here being the chairman. What was that process like of just that transition of kind of uh, just leadership in the chapter? Maybe both of you can kind of talk about that. Uh, process like Chris talked I mean I kind of volunteered him that he was going to be the chairman <laughs> uh, we, I mean we had a few options but we talked I talked with uh two valuable people that we to our chapter uh 
Andrew Pickett and Dave Neal, which is our – Andrew Pickett's our chapter advisor and Dave Neal's our regional director for DU. I mean, they helped me – they helped me work through the decision and with a few others, but they were a big part of me making the decision. And I just kind of ran over everything with Chris and, like, how everything should be, like gave him a bunch of files and just – basically just gave him everything I could give him to succeed, which was given to me by our previous chairman before me. And Chris, what was that like uh, taking taking that responsibility, and then to building that team under under you to kind of get continue EC, ECU's legacy? <laughs> well, you know, it kind of like threw me for a shot because he threw it on me like right before last year's <laughs> big banquet. He just came up to me like, "Hey, man, you're gonna be chair next year." And walked off. I'm like, "What did you say?" But uh, no, nah, I mean, I felt honored. I ain't gonna lie, I felt a little intimidated, you know, coming in. EC's well known in the Duck, uh, Ducks Unlimited community especially the collegiate level, you know, being a top five chapter and keep building our portfolio. But uh, getting everybody in order, you know, it's kind of a struggle. We all have certain things, uh, other jobs, other commitments, and uh, also school going on. So it's kind of hard to get everybody together. But when we do, you know, we knock out what we need to get done, talk about everything we have to, uh, we have coming up and uh, just, you know, making friends and building uh, relationships through it is also very valuable also. And how many um – Members, or do you guys have involved with your chapter? And then, two also NC State, how big is your chapter? So actively involved, we probably have 30, uh, to, 30 to 40, yeah. roughly. And then our executive board, their executive board this year, I think, is uh, nine people. Okay. So we probably have, like, probably 65, 70 active, and then we have 16 on our officer committee. Nice. And I don't know about y'all, but, like, like Tanner was saying, he gave me, like, we call it the holy grail. It's uh, everything previous chairmen and co-chairmen have built over the past years from 2004 on up that uh, teaches us, like, what's worked what's worked best for them in the past, what's probably going to work in the future. Kind of like a, a guide for us on how to run the chapter also. And if we have anything new, we just add on top of it. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I got the torch passed, it was a, a world when I got thrown into our big fall banquet. And, I mean, I remember as a, I got – basically, at the end of my freshman year, they kind of looked at me and were like, look, we need you to – take over in the next next semester and kind of, you know, threw me in the deep end, but that's how I like to learn. Um, I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, but they didn't just, you know, leave you out to dry. I mean, Zach, Zach Pegram, Drew Clapp, Andrew Williams, they've all, and Cody Stainback um, and Chris Stainback and Nick Mitchell, all of them guys, our past chairman, have really helped us, you know, helped me learn how to run it, learn how to do it the right way because, I mean, you can – Run it like a business and do all right, but you got to realize at the end of the day, these people are volunteering their time to do it. You can't force these kids to do anything, um, especially with a college student. It's hard to get them to you know, really get after it sometimes, but most of the ones that we have are really involved and want to do it, which is really nice. Um, but, I mean, you know, you come for the cause, but you stay for the people. And with it being the now just start of the spring semester, there's, there's still time for people to join the chapter, right? Yep, yes. always. You can What's, join any day of the year if you want we'll to. Accept, we accept new members no matter the time of the year. You can do it the day before the banquet if you want to. <laughs> you walk in the door and want to work, I'll let you do it. I mean, you can do it after the banquet. I mean, it's all about the people making the friendships. I mean, my best friends come from Ducks Unlimited at ECU. Um, yeah. It's all about just the people. So if you get people want to join, we don't we won't turn anybody away. Yeah. D was probably the best decision I ever made in college. <clears throat> I remember I used to think, you know, when you go to college, you know, you need to get the good grades. You have to have a good GPA. You won't get a job. I've never had a career, uh, employer look at my GPA. Never. They don't even ask for a resume. They go, who are the people you know and what's your work ethic? And, I mean, I think that's a great way that DU ch- can teach that. I mean, both of our chapters are, I mean, they're, they're huge and they're high stress. It teaches you how to manage people. It teaches you how to do everything. Um, and, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't give up DU for anything. I mean, I've been able to. Lucky enough to travel all over the country and hunts. I mean, and meet all kinds of people. So it's been awesome. Yeah, another thing about that. I mean, me and Mason grew up in the same hometown, but didn't really, weren't really close. So now I'd say we're close. We're a whole lot closer now because oh, yeah. of DU. Yeah. Just and we still and we go to different schools. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're an hour and a half apart, and I mean, we still see each other almost. I mean, we see each other a couple couple times a year, and we have mutual friends too. And mm-hmm. um, I mean. Most of my good friends are probably in DU. Yeah, I can agree. I can agree with that. I can also just building that relationship. Just uh, you know, it's, it's something different. Like you know, we talked about uh, somebody mentioned third term earlier. Uh, that's when all the, like the college chapters come together. 
we all just celebrate what we did throughout the year. You know, you meet people from out of state, Arkansas, California. We met some guy from Canada just, just this past year, you know, kind of threw me for a shock. Didn't know we had DU that far up, <laughs> but it's kind of cool to like that. It reaches out to people like that. You know, like, like I said, we have like that little rivalry. So, like, we see them throughout the year. Like, when baseball comes up, when we play ECU or when we play state, uh, he'll come down. And if we go play state, we'll go up there and watch them also. No, that's, that's a lot of fun. And yeah, having having that community there, um, even within North Carolina, that's always that's always there for you guys uh, to always be connecting and working um, together and ask helping each other out. So, um, I had a question. Oh, um, if someone, we had, I think someone. Oh, it was it was Bryson because so we got to plug Bryson here uh, this from this weekend. So um, if you guys are looking for some. Is it here we go? Yeah, fly tackle or anything you control for sailfish. Fly, yeah, fly tackle. You guys know this stuff better than I do. Yeah, I mean, he's twelve. I mean, if I was had that same mindset when I was twelve, I'd probably be doing a whole lot better than I am right now. I mean, he's a good kid and has a hometown company. I mean, if I was gonna do it, I'd support him. Yep. No, if you guys need some uh, custom fishing gear, Bryson with High Tide. H Y T I D E. Check him out on Instagram and. Go buy him on their website. He's been. He was saying he was shipping fl- ties all around the country. So he just yeah. finished the order for like Guatemala. Yeah, it's crazy. Like all over the states, mm-hmm. across the country, you know, across across the world. He's, I think he said Dominican Republic at one time. Right. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, he's big time. Big time. Um, so yeah, no, he was asking about like how like he's already thinking about college. So <laughs> <laughs> wanting to get involved. Yeah, which college do you want to go to? Uh, we're trying to talk him go to EC, but uh, you know, <laughs> I believe you want to go to state. <laughs> But he he was talking about uh, wanting to get involved with how like how do you get involved with the DU chapter uh, at a college? So how do you guys do that? Um, I mean, we kind of use recruitment events as our main way to do it, um, and also word of mouth. We have an Instagram an Instagram page that you can we post on it to come to the meetings, come to the recruitment events. Um, you know, and I think the main thing to target target the college kids is you know we don't make it just we try not to make it you know super boring. We make it to where they want to be there. You know, if you if they don't want to be there, they're not going to work hard. Um, I mean, you want dedicated members to be able to do what we do. I mean, we don't get to the status that we are without hardworking members. Yeah, like you said, recruitment event. Like uh, I know ECU, we had this big like one day out on our what we call the mall. It's just a big old greenway with full grass, and like people walk by every day. Uh, we'll have a table out there. Also, word of mouth, Instagram, uh, friends and families always men- also mention it. Uh, and if you're asking yourself, do you have to duck hunt and joint? No, you don't. We got people in the club that don't duck hunt, never duck hunt a day in their life. Probably wouldn't even know how to call a duck call, but we still, like, welcome them with open arms because they want to join, like, have that family, like, that uh, friendship. Yeah, I mean, we have plenty of people that have never shot a gun, never never duck hunted before, never been any kind of hunting, but they just like the family aspect that we have. And, um, I mean, I think we have a good, uh, like, what do you call it? Committee committee and like name name for ourselves I mean, they, they see what we do and they just kind of like want to be a part of it like it's just kind of draws their attention to us it's kind of cool actually yeah yeah it's it's funny how things like that just kind of people gravitate toward that kind of energy and and the things that you guys are building um do you think like talking about that like do you think it's the the community aspect that kind of draws people into those du chapters or what do you what do you think it is? I would say I would say yes, the community aspect. I mean, the open arms, friendships. When you go to a meeting and everybody's talking, joking around, it's going to make it easier for somebody new to just come in and join and join in on con- on conversation. I mean, nobody wants to go into a meeting that's just nobody's talking until it starts. I know a lot of ECE meetings we're talking 15, 20 minutes before, 15, 20 minutes after, just joking around with each other, with each other and everything like that. I will say it's kind of hard during our meeting. Mm-hmm. Everybody just keeps talking. Yeah. Like, I don't want to stop it, but, you know, we got to get stuff done first. <laughs> yep. And someone listening to this, it's it's not all the time about duck hunting either, those conversations I'd imagine. <laughs> no, no. So, constantly joking around with right. each other. Constantly different, each other. different things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Else. Anything, anything else you guys want to talk about with your guys' chapters? Any last plugs? Um, grab your tickets or anything like that? Oh, yeah, grab your tickets for February 16th up in Greenville Convention Center, Greenville, North Carolina. Yeah, I mean, we got our, oyster, our uh, annual oyster us. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got our oyster us on April 5th. Um, we got sponsorships, tickets available, you know. They're kind of towards the end of their event ready to get started, and we kind of are building the next one. So, um, I don't know, as soon as – 
we start ours, they'll be on the next one too. I know yeah. they have a gun bash, so we'll have a gun bash in October. I know. I know ECU will probably be at State's Oyster Row supporting them, and I know I think State's coming to yep. ECU's banquet to support us. So, I mean, it just we, it goes back and forth. All right. Um, so, yeah, make sure you guys, listeners, uh, if you're not in North Carolina, uh, is there any ways, like, people from out of state can support you? I think mean, uh, can always reach out to the uh, social media pages or anything like that. If you look at the ticket flyers, there's contact information on ticket flyers. Reach out to those contacts. They're willing to talk to anybody. They want to consider doing donating anything to us. So they just look up Instagram, Pirate Chapter DU, and you can see what we've been doing, see what we've got coming up on all the events coming up. Sweet. Yeah, and you can find us on NCSU Ducks Unlimited. So. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, so regardless, if you're out of state or in state, um, yeah, you can support both of these uh, chapters here in North Carolina. Where do you all see your chapter going from where you're at now? Where do you, like, we're obviously both at the top, so, I mean – does it get much bigger than where we're at? I, between with us, I mean, I feel like it's good. We'll always, I feel like it will always get bigger, like with the amount we earn. But I don't think the people are really going to get bigger. I think these chapters have kind of hit the main groups of where they're going to be at, uh, committee wise and everything. But I think there's always, you can always go up from wherever we're at. And I think we've proven that. Both chapters have proven that. Yeah. I think it's all about new ideas, you know, whether it be, our chapters, if you're famous, you know, musician, whatever, you kind of hit that plateau. Once you kind of reach the top, so you always got to come up with new, fresh ideas. Like, I know this year we got a, a oyster table coming out, you know, just Pirate exclusive. It has our uh, Pirate chapter logo on everything. So that's going to be a hopefully a big big winner for everybody at a banquet coming up. Yeah, I'm sure you could sell, we could sell that at ours, and you know. Oh, yeah, can you? <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, just uh, fresh new ideas coming in. That's where we uh, kind of rely on our committee also, you know. They come up, fresh new ideas, people new to the chapter, you know, outs- outside eyes looking in, you know, different thoughts, uh, new ideas, uh, kind of keep everything open up to it. Mm-hmm. You guys looking forward to third term this sh- this next summer then? Oh, yeah. 100%. Yep. How do you guys feel where you're going to rank? I feel like it'll be it's going to be very similar. I'm going to put you on the spot right now. I mean, I, I, I'll go ahead and say it's we're it's going to be us, like the two of us, and probably Nebraska. I mean, the same top three probably. All right. If I had to put, guess, put I, mean, I feel pretty confident. I feel pretty confident. They know what we've done. We kind of know what they've done. Yeah, I feel pretty confident in our both of our chapters that we'll be we'll be in the top five for sure. I mean, all I know is North Carolina is dominating. So, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's not really no, I don't see another state having two or three chapters that are doing what we're doing. That is true. I will say we always fight for that number one spot, but it's, it's kind of good to see two North Carolina chapters up top also. Yeah, that is cool to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, third term third term will be fun this year. So, yeah. um, What about um, when it comes – like, so now we're kind of wrapping up the, the hunting season. And so what's, When does your guys' duck season end out here? January 31st. Yep. 31st, it does. What's next for you guys? What do you guys do during the off season to kind of keep your minds at peace? Sleep. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, <laughs> so I'm up. sleep. Yeah, I mean you have turkey season in two months. <laughs> yep. So I mean turkey season's coming up. I know all of us. Yeah. He's probably you know he, we're all working, having you know doing doing all that you know, yep. um, doing whatever. So I say I'm graduating soon, so you know. Step out into the real world coming up. Got to find a job. Yep. Same boat yep. we're all in. Yep. What's that process like? For, I bet a lot of students out. Yeah, I, I, bet a, I bet a lot of students can relate to this. Stressful. It's it's stressful. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely stressful, but I think you need to kind of, if you can start in the beginning and rely on the people you know rather than your classes you're taking. Like, unless you're like a doctor or something, like, you know, focus on your classes. I'm not saying don't do good in school, but – um. <laughs> I don't think it's the most important Stay thing. Kids. Uh, I'm not, yeah. Coll- you know, if you, college is for you, do it. But I'm just saying the people are what are going to get you so much farther in life than that GPA ever will. I mean, I'm telling you, the day you graduate, that GPA is gone. It is all about the people you've met, the stuff you've done, and, I mean, your work ethic. I mean, I think that's the the best way I can think of to describe it. Yeah. I say build those relationships. You never know who you're talking to, who you might be able to use as a reference down the road or just have a good word, like good – uh. For them to throw a good word out on your name, you know. So, for sure, just meet those good people and stay connected with them. Yep. I can agree with both both things they said. I mean, that's all you have, just the people. GPA, like Mason said, goes out the window. 
I've applied for a lot of jobs between graduate school, after graduate school and undergrad, and I've never been asked about my GPA one time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of kids nowadays will stress, and I think teachers also kind of put it on, like, you have to do good in school. Like, you have to do this. You have to do that. You have to be the best student you can be. And really, it's all about how hard you work. I mean, how much do you really want to achieve what you want, you know? I mean, your goals are your goals are everything. Yeah, no, you can you're, – you're the only one fighting for yourself in, in terms of where you want to go. So, um, and having people around you that, to, to help with that, um, people to bring you up can only motivate you even more to want it more. So, um, yeah, no, it's – I remember that time of year – <laughs> they're graduating not <laughs> two months beforehand. No clue what I'm yeah. doing afterwards. Like <laughs> I get one more semester to think about it, but <laughs> right, um, whatnot. But um, so when it comes to even like, are you guys already already think at all thinking about next hunting season in ter- like planning trips or anything like that or um, things you want to do? I mean, we're not. Pl- I'm not planning anything. And I wouldn't mind heading up north to. Hopefully shoot some king otters one day. You know, that's always been a bucket list <laughs> bird for me, like going up to Maine or something. So I'll probably look into that coming up soon since season's ending to kind of focus on seeing where I want to go, find some good places to hunt. Yeah, I mean, I like to try and go on at least one or two trips a year. Um, I got to go to Arkansas and uh, Colorado this year, and those are both amazing hunts and looking to hopefully go. I'm working in Kansas this summer, so I'm going to try and work in some spots out there. So maybe we can get on some, some uh, local guys out there. Nice, nice. Um, this is kind of one thought I've I've had, and just, just things I've noticed is that students are willing to travel further for hunts, even amongst like your guys' chapter of the students that do hunt. Do a lot of students now? And are you guys seeing a lot of students travel for for hunts? Oh, yeah. yep. All really? over the country. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter. They go to Canada. They'll go to Arkansas. They'll go to. I mean, I know a guy in Georgia in D. That he went to Montana. I mean, yep. they'll go anywhere. If there's birds, we'll go. And that is, like, cost effect. Like, looking at the cost of that, that's worth it, paying those travel costs for those hunts compared to even, like, stick, sticking that money in to, like, even your area and, like, scouting and things like that. It's just yeah. different hunting. Just yeah. the experience is kind experience of just experience. The types of birds, I mean, the amount of birds you see is just completely different than what you would see around around where we live. Yeah. You know, I love a good woody hunt. Sometimes you got to step out sometimes, go see something different, see something new. Right. Yeah, I mean, it keeps the spark alive, like why you like to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if I mean, Arkansas is a special place. I mean, unless you're in Hyde County, North Carolina, the closest thing you're going to – I mean, the next best thing is, you know, Arkansas, Kansas, that central flyway. I mean, we got a good flyway where we're at, but the birds like to be where they want to be. And if you're not where they want to be, then it's kind of hard, you know. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to go where they are. Um I mean, that's another thing about DU is that you can meet people and, you know, get cut some of the costs down, like stay at some of your friends' house that you've met. At the, I know I've stayed at one of my friends that I met at third term. I mean, I literally talked to him on the phone, and I we stay at, hang out at his house. I mean, it saves the cost of a hotel. I mean, he knows farmers out there, so that cuts the cost of the guide service. I mean, really, you're just paying for gas and food. Right. That's exactly what I'm doing yeah. <laughs> with the tour. It's just, yeah, I'm, I've been – blessed with having kind of like yeah the campus waterfowl and being able to meet all these students and and now I get to travel or I had the idea of traveling and actually meeting going to meet these students and now filming the hunts with them and yeah uh save save on costs on by just hanging out with you guys for the weekend and um just go hunting so yep yeah people can easily do kind of like what you just said it's yeah just network and just get to know one another and, and all it takes is just a message on Instagram yeah. Just asking them what it's like hunting in, in a specific area or what, yeah, things I mean, like that. I mean, yeah. you, can, you can pay a lot of money to go hunt or just go to a DU chapter and talk to somebody. Right. <laughs> good, good chance they're going to they're gonna have a spot to go. Mm-hmm. I'll say a huge shout-out for Mr. Nathan and Miss Kelly for allowing us here. I mean, oh, yeah. they have welcomed us with open arms. Yep. yep. No, that was uh, – we got we got lucky <laughs> oh, yeah. for for uh, how this all came about. So it's funny I when uh, talking to Nathan just how this whole thing came about. It it was a coworker of mine. They met 
down in Florida, they said, and they they chatted, and it was literally probably about the same time when we were kind of having the idea of doing a hunt like this or and putting this together, and one thing led to the next, so it took one person getting me in contact with Nathan, who then had the, the idea to even the craziness to put all this together uh, with me and Justin and uh, his wife. And then we got um, Kelly here. And so, yeah, I know it's a lot of people, a lot of moving pieces this weekend. We can't thank uh, them all enough for um, hosting. And even we had an oyster roast the other night. Um, I don't, did you guys count how many oysters you guys ate? It's best not to keep track. Yeah, it's best not yeah. to keep track. <laughs> we had two bushels, so. Yeah. And that was it was more than enough, oh, <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah. desserts were amazing. So, um, it was a lot of fun up here and we can't thank, thank them enough for, for hosting and, and letting us all be here. So, <clears throat> um, anything else you guys can think of? You guys are ready. You guys are probably pretty tired. Yeah. Yeah. A little Been tired. A long season. Got a long, long season, long weekend, uh, long, long drive, drive back. back. Yeah, we got three drive hours. back. I mean, we got a three hour drive back. Yeah. So, but yeah. Well worth it. Good yeah, times, yeah, yeah. good people. So wouldn't change it for the world. No. I think I think this is a good good spot to wrap up. Before we end up though, I wanna I wanna have you guys share your kind of uh, your fondest memory from this hunting season. So I would definitely say my my fondest memory would be today. I mean, in the in the ditch with some of your best <laughs> with some of your best buddies shooting shooting swans. I mean you can, not a lot of people say they can say they did it. Yeah, it's different. I would say that also. I mean, looking down the line and watching y'all shoot, big old smile coming across the station. It's kind of cool. Just like we all come together, us NC State. You know, met over the years through DU. You know, just having us all together, yeah. just hunting the same bird, just having a good time, good laughs, making memories. Yeah, I mean, t- I think today in Colorado are probably my two. I mean, the, yeah, getting to hang out with the people today and the birds in Colorado. I mean, it's uncomparable. I mean, it's and they're both amazing. What was that uh, experience like in Colorado, and what? Why were you in Colorado? Mason? So I got a, <laughs> That's another thing about DU. Got a cool opportunity. Got to hunt with DU TV. Um, got to meet the host Colin Mulligan at third term. He invited me out. Um, I mean, it was it was pretty awesome. I mean, DU kind of funded the whole thing. I just had to just had to get there. Um, and we got to hunt mallards in the field for two days. We hunt geese in the cornfield. I mean, it was negative thirty. Um, the wind chill could have. The wind chill got it about negative forty. Um, so, I mean, I was in a marshmallow suit basically trying to shoot birds, but, you know, <laughs> scraped out a couple. So, that episode will be out, I think, next year. So, I think this this coming year. Yeah, well, this – Or, yeah, this coming up season. Yeah, this upcoming season. I think those get start releasing in July, August, I think. Yeah. So, looking forward to that coming out. So, that was a cool opportunity. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do it again. So, mm-hmm. definitely try to take advantage of it while I had it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all, all, ki- all kinds of different things. You never know where – that's what that's with life though. You never know what's gonna <laughs> unfold. So as long as you you make an effort to meet one, uh, meet people, network, um, just put one foot in front of the other. You just never know where it's gonna take you. So, oh, yeah. um, you guys all good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that's gonna do it here um, in North Carolina with NC State and ECU. Uh, thank you guys for uh, putting coming together and, and doing this hunt. And if it weren't for you guys drawing your, your tags, we wouldn't be here yeah. <laughs> so, well, thank um, you to the lottery, <laughs> right? <laughs> the lottery system. So, um, no, it was a lot of fun this weekend. Had a great time. Uh, yeah. Like, like we said a lot in this podcast, thank, thank you to everyone that put, help put this together. Um, try, try state or try, try County guide service. Um, Nathan, um, and his wife and Kelly and, just high tide. It was, no, oh yeah, and high tide and Bryson, of course. Um, beautiful, beautiful area. Got to tour, tour uh, the Madame Ski, and then even just Hyde County as a whole. Um, thank you for um, just being just great. I guess host of the, just when we were at, especially at Martell's, that was awesome. <laughs> so yeah. uh, remember that for, for a long time. So, um, but to kind of give you guys an update where Campus Waterfall is at. Um, next weekend and the, the following after this trip, the next set of videos will be from Mississippi State. Um, so we'll be down in Mississippi to finish out the duck season. Um, and we might have – I'm getting word that there might be another trip between now and Mississippi State or shortly after Mississippi State. So 
that that's on the the back burner right now. Uh, but then also we're possibly going to probably going to be doing a couple uh, conservation goose hunts this springtime. So this will be the first time that we've done that for the tour. But um, I know there's some students out there that have some big uh, snow snow goose rigs and setups. So if you guys do, uh, feel free to reach out to the campus waterfowl page. I'd uh, love to hear kind of what your guys' plans are for this spring and um, if there's a, a way that we can connect and make it all work, make everything come together, um, maybe that's something that we can we can plan for this spring. But, um, yeah, feel free to reach out to us there. Um, but that's going to end it here in North Carolina. Thank you guys for listening and watching the Campus Waterfall podcast. We'll see you in the next one.